There are lots of ways you can log on your computer. I like to do it with class. The main component of this gadget is this RFID card reader and an Arduino Micro. This latter can act like a keyboard or a mouse when connected to the computer. So we can send any commands through it, like right click there, write your name, etc. With an Arduino, you can program something to do when something happens. For example, when a button is pressed, your name is written. But here, I won't use a button, nor will I write names. I'll use an RFID system as the sensor, and I will write my password to log on. As simple as that. It works great. By the way, this is how you need to connect the RFID RC522 with the Arduino. I can also make a servo motor move in order to lock or open something. As I don't have any door to lock, I'll make a box. I need an RFID card reader, the RC522, an Arduino Micro, a servo motor, a battery and other little things. I started by measuring and arranging the components as to know the right size needed. I then transferred the measurements on some plywood. The height is the same for all sides, so I cut one long piece and used my magic saw to cut the width at one piece at a time. I cut the top and the bottom plate too, so I had six plates. I sanded all of them down flat with a Dremel first and then with some 80 grit sanding paper. But remember that safety is first. That being done, I moved to the front plate where all the components will be, like the guard reader, the switch or the LEDs. I marked the mounting holes for these and drilled them out. This is the TP4056, which will charge the LiPo battery. Not only does it charge the battery, but it acts as a security. As with it, if you want to reprogram the Arduino, you actually need to open the box. Without the battery and this TP4056, to power the box, you would need to access the power port of the Arduino. This would also let you reprogram the Arduino. The box could then easily be opened without the right RFID card. Anyway, so I cut a hole for it. I fixed the card reader with bolts and nuts. I pushed the LEDs, the switch and the TP4056 into their respective holes. This is what the front will look like. To power the Arduino, I need at least 5 volts. The LiPo battery being 3.7 volts. I use a step-up module to have the voltage a bit higher than 5 volts. I soldered and connected the wires to and from the Arduino and step-up module. The LEDs need a resistor to lower the voltage of the Arduino. So I soldered a 220 ohm resistor onto the negative pin of the LEDs. I connected the wires to the Arduino, did some programming and tested. There are three LED sequence to know what the box is doing. I glued the TP4056 to the front plate. After connecting the server motor to the Arduino, I tested the system. This latter draws around 80 milliamp. My battery has a capacity of 300 milliamp hour. This means it could run for almost four hours without being turned off. But of course, I turn it off once it isn't in use. So if I turned it on five seconds every single day, it would theoretically last seven years. That's pretty good, to be honest. I then glued the side pieces, firstly with hot glue to hold them in place then with wood glue to seal the deal. The next part was the hinge. This was unexpectedly hard, but after doing some tests, marking the holes, trailing on both plates, 
making an indentation to accept the edge of the hinge and using bolts and nuts to mount it, it finally worked. Well, it may be good to have a door, but if you can't open it, it's not much use. So I need a handle. I went with this uh, wire pattern that I knit. I figured out the right length and started knitting. When I had a good size, I marked where the handle would pass through the other side to then drill it. To attach it to the door, well, because it's wire, I just soldered it to itself, put heat ring tube, and I had a handle. The locking mechanism was also quite complex. I made several tests to find this method that worked quite well. I then needed to connect the servo motor arm to the hook on the locking piece. These are called push rods, but I had a bit of trouble as my rod was too thick. But this is uh, basically how to do it. You need uh, one small plier and one big flat plier. This is it in action and it works great. Now I just need to mount it in the box. I chose to put it in the back to have more room for other stuff, but I realized this was the worst place to put it. It needs to go under the handle. Anyway, so I glued the servo and the holding piece, and to glue the other piece, I put glue on the top and simply closed the box. I'm really happy with how this box turned out, and I surprisingly learned quite a lot. Well, that's the end of this video. If you have any questions, ask me in the comments. Please subscribe and I'll see you next time.